Hello everyone, my name is Gumer Ken. I come from Taiwan. I'm very happy to attend this conference. Today, my topic is to use PyDive to run Python in the browser, rendering medical data files. The outline. Initially, I will introduce motivation, and then I will introduce PyDive feature, as well as uh, how PyDive works uh, and how to use PyDive. Second, I will introduce my project, Embedded PyDiCon React Viewer. And why is DICON including uh, features and introduce uh, its implementation details? And also, I will introduce some PyDi usage notes and tips uh, I found out. Now, let's keep in uh, the PyDi uh, documentation. Finally, conclusion. Motivation. Uh, previously, I made a contention. Uh, its name is uh, DICON Interviewer. Here I show some Daikang by uh, basic information and it's a, a Daikang image. The problem is uh, I use a JavaScript Daikon parser, uh, which is a little old and not maintained. And also the other uh, JavaScript uh, libraries are too heavy to use or less uh, documented. So I think about the other solution. I made this a uh, table comp compilation. Uh, the first color is uh, the skill I used before. Uh, pure, uh, pure JavaScript. And of course, uh, we can use uh, Ray or Angular or Vue to achieve strong integrity and high uh, customized level UI and use a uh, web to easily uh, do uh, distribution. Just open the HTML uh, website URL. And it comes is sometimes you may not, you may not uh, find out the suitable JavaScript data or scientific library or in your organization. Uh, you need to cooperate co co with some uh, data scientific team and they use Python version, but uh, you, the JavaScript level you found uh, may have different implementations. It's uh, very easy to happen. And the uh, second one, uh, use JavaScript uh, plus uh, Python server. And of course, uh, you can achieve a very high extensible ability uh, to install any Python package. Uh, but it comes, uh, it's uh, uh, obvious, it's heavier. You need to uh, give more effort uh, to design or uh, data move and API. Also, you need to deploy it is, uh, deploy your server. And as well as you can uh, try to use Jupyter, but it's uh, suitable for this uh, prototyping. The final one I, I found out is uh, uh, just to use uh, JavaScript plus Python. And you can uh, use uh, any uh, JavaScript library, uh, for example, Lua and Lua Angular to ch achieve the same uh, advantage as uh, pure JavaScript. Also, you can install a uh, scientific uh, Python stack, uh, also any Python uh, wheel package. And also, you can achieve a uh, uh, tool uh, of low Python server should be loading, which is so-called serverless. And it comes, uh, the download size is about uh, 30 to 150 uh, megabyte. And downloading time plus loading time is uh, three to four seconds. And uh, it's a uh, slow it's speed is slower than local uh, Python, but uh, you can use a uh, NumPy uh, to speed up. So I try to use a uh, uh, PyDi uh, with a uh, PyDiCon library. Let's uh, uh, introduce a uh, PyDi features. It supports uh, you can write JavaScript uh, assess Python arbitrary uh, and Python methods and functions, uh, or in your Python script, you can assess a uh, JavaScript object method and functions. And you can install a uh, Python package, including uh, existing uh, PyDi package, a scientific state, and uh, example, LumPy, Pandas, MakePyLib, SciPy, and Scikit-learn. Totally, uh, uh, totally, there are uh, 74 packages uh, until now. Or you can install any uh, pure Python wheel, and you can uh, run it on a web worker. That's the point here. Uh, in your Python script, uh, you can now use uh, the built-in Python uh, HTTP request API, but instead you can use a uh, JavaScript API in your Python code. And you need to put pay, uh, some effort to achieve uh, do this thing. Uh, you need to import your uh, own Python file one by one. If you divide your Python code uh, in multiple files, and if you want to use an uh, integrated debugger, you need to uh, configure them. Uh, this uh, web application to plot Taiwan uh, accumulating uh, native by Jupyter Lab, which is a uh, next generation of Jupyter Lab. And you can see this uh, code snip. Uh, first, I install Plotty, and then I import Plotty and import Pandas. 
and then I use uh, just query fetch instead of a uh, Python request to download the, the data. And uh, I convert it to as a Python string and save it uh, in a uh, robot name virtual file system here. And then I use pandas to read this data. And then I use property to uh, show the, this picture. So uh, you can see until uh, uh, September, there are totally uh, one, uh, 10 million people in Taiwan who are uh, communicating uh, uh, vaccinated. That's how PyDai works. Uh, it's very, uh, the theory is very simple. We uh, compile Python interpreter as web-assembling code, which is very powerful. And in this uh, web-assembling uh, space, uh, it contains a Python interpreter, uh, also a PyDai Python package, uh, as well as uh, the other Python wheels. Uh, also, uh, you can put your own uh, Python scripts, and uh, there are some uh, Python objects uh, allocated. And you can have some interaction between Python and JavaScript. And there are some interaction between JavaScript and HTML DOM. So the result is uh, in your Python script, uh, you, even you can uh, upgrade HTML DOM by JavaScript uh, in your Python. So this is the example. Uh, in this example, uh, we can access uh, HTML DOM like this way, append the some uh, text in the HTML body. It's very powerful. Uh, how to use uh, PyDai? Uh, this is a very basic example. First, you need to download PyDai means one uh, just query from either from this one in your HTML code or uh, in your just query code. And in your just query, you, uh, you first you need to uh, import uh, some uh, PyDai uh, npm package. Okay. So uh, after uh, one, uh, step one, in step two, uh, you need to load call this function call, PyDai function call to load the PyDai main opening view. Which includes some uh, files, uh, for example, uh, package data, some PyDai as web assembly data, uh, PyDai uh, some uh, just create files. Totally is about uh, 10 uh, megabytes. And from uh, step three to uh, step five, it is a group of uh, continuous uh, steps. Uh, first, uh, you can uh, define your Python script as just create string, or you can pull this uh, string. You, you uh, uh, put the, the Python script in uh, some internal uh, Python file and uh, fetch them, either this one or this one. And step four, uh, you need to uh, call some uh, call PyDai log package from imports. And this one uh, here, you 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 pass uh, the Python script uh, uh, as an argument. So this one will scan this one, uh, scan the Python script and import the some uh, PyDai package. For, for example, uh, the second line. Uh, we import the PIL package, the PyDai package. And step five, uh, we use a uh, PyDai that run Python async uh, and pass uh, this uh, script uh, as the argument. Or some, sometimes you can just, uh, another function call is a uh, PyDai that run Python without async, which means uh, if we do not need to uh, use a uh, Python async, you just call another function call. And uh, this function, function call will execute this Python, uh, Python script. Uh, the, the line, the line four, this one will uh, install any uh, uh, third party uh, Python, uh, Python uh, wheel package from PIPI or you can, uh, from, uh, you can download from any cell host uh, wheel uh, URL. And uh, line five, uh, you will print a hello world. If you open your browser for Smart Chrome, uh, you can see the uh, console uh, has uh, some uh, hello world uh, printed. And uh, these two lines, uh, we import uh, SYS system, and then uh, the final, uh, final line, we execute uh, this uh, uh, expression. So the most important thing is uh, it will uh, treat uh, as the, uh, the expression of a final line as the, this function calls return value in JavaScript. So the Python, uh, uh, this variable uh, will uh, get this uh, value. Uh, of this uh, expression. So uh, you will print it in your just create call console log uh, show uh, 3.9.5, this uh, version is true. Left hand. So uh, the left hand of uh, PyDai login is just uh, as same as uh, IEP or Jupyter. So which means uh, if you try to uh, run a Python script first, and then uh, you try to run another Python script, the second uh, Python script running will uh, uh, remember uh, the previous uh, variable allocated, which means uh, this, this time and this time, 
are the same, the same one lifetime. So in this example, uh, we define this as quick and then uh, return down uh, this tree, uh, expression as the, 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 the variable. So here we, uh, we get 120. And we define another uh, uh, Python script. And here, the, if we uh, execute the second uh, Python script of this uh, Python code 2, so uh, here uh, we'll get uh, one. Uh, yeah. And uh, we here we, we here we'll show a one and we pass another one. So uh, total is two. So here we after, uh, after executing this time, uh, we'll get a uh, printed uh, uh, string uh, two. So uh, how just create access uh, Python in Python uh, framework? First, uh, just create will convert Python arbitrary. It divides uh, to two cases: immutable up Python arbitrary. Uh, you will become uh, you will convert convert integer for example, integer for string boolean long uh, to uh, just create primitive value. You just do memory copy. And the second case is a uh, mutable arbitrary. Uh, for example, a uh, Python uh, function uh, dictionary say your own case arbitrary, uh, you will become a PyPath in just query. And another thing you need to, you need to remember is a uh, uh, triple uh, by, uh, by array in Python, because there's no uh, uh, the, rep, the, uh, rep, the replacement in just query. So uh, they will uh, convert this to uh, a PyPath arbitrary in just query. And so the, the question is, what is the pi parsing in just query? So uh, it just uh, forward uh, your request. The, the request, uh, for example, maybe assessing uh, object member uh, attribute, uh, uh, string, uh, string attribute or uh, member function, uh, request this function to, uh, to the refer Python object and uh, get the result to the just query. It just a uh, kind of uh, uh, parsing pattern. So uh, how to assess uh, from JavaScript to Python? So first, uh, you can uh, run PyDai, run Python script, a sync, or with uh, R, a sync, and you will get a return value from the last line. So you uh, return value uh, uh, maybe uh, become a, a JavaScript value or JavaScript Py proxy in JavaScript. And second, uh, you, you can, uh, after you getting a PyPath, uh, you can call a, a PyPath of a Python function, or if you refer to a Python object, uh, you can call this uh, object uh, member function. Uh, after calling, you will get the function uh, or mem uh, member function uh, return. It's another PyPath uh, object or primitive value. And you, uh, another thing you need to remember is uh, uh, Python object uh, attribute could be another object, and which means uh, a, a, a member attribute of uh, uh, will be another uh, PyPath object in just query. Uh, so uh, the second, uh, the third case is uh, you can let's say uh, uh, get or set the by the PyPath. For example, if you have a PyPath of a list, Python list. Uh, you can already uh, get its value, uh, get the first element uh, value, or even you can uh, set the first uh, element as some value by its purpose. It will forward this request. And uh, final ways you can directly assess object uh, to us to get or set. Uh, this one is uh, you can uh, assess a uh, py, uh, Python global variable uh, to, for example, uh, get a long variable global variable. Variable, or you can say the global variable long as two, or you can define uh, Python uh, have uh, some custom namespace. This is simple. Uh, you define in your JavaScript. You define some uh, Python uh, dictionary in JavaScript uh, as is uh, uh, the second argument, and you will become this uh, uh, constant namespace. And you run Python script, and this uh, you just define. Uh, the size four to one y is a global variable, and finally, uh, you you use just create a console log this a constant constant space to get this uh, y variable. So uh, this is how Python assess just create. Normally, it's uh, similar to previous page. Uh, Python will convert just create data, uh, including a primitive uh, value to a uh, Python uh, object. Just do some uh, memory uh, copy, become Python immutable object, or uh, for just query object, you will become uh, 
face project in Python. And uh, similarly, uh, it will afford uh, the request to the, the JavaScript object. And how to assess? Uh, you can directly call a, a JS plus uh, function or member function and then gain the returns as a Python object. And then you can uh, use uh, this JS plus to, uh, to get or to save some, some data. And, and then uh, this is a direct assess object. Uh, this example, uh, you can in your Python code, you can uh, global, uh, you assess a global uh, JavaScript uh, variable, or you can define uh, the uh, JavaScript uh, uh, module in Python. So in, in Python code, you can assess uh, the, the module scope uh, this uh, object, uh, uh, the long, uh, long daily data, and then you can uh, get or set. So it's uh, the first one conclusion. Uh, if the access data is uh, just a, a normal uh, immutable or primitive data, so you just uh, use the same uh, the normal way in the language just to uh, access uh, to get or write the data. It's very simple, and it's done by the implicit conversion of uh, Python. So uh, the, the tricky part is the JS flash and PyFlash. In Python, use uh, JS flash. Uh, it could be referring to a, a JavaScript object. For the JavaScript object, uh, you can use the da, uh, notation a dot b, for example, uh, to assess the data. And second, uh, you suppose uh, use the subscript to assess uh, array element or uh, object element in Python. And of course, it supports a foreign. And also, you suppose you, even you can uh, internet a JavaScript object in Python, use this uh, syntax. And also, you can do some uh, deep uh, conversion copy uh, in Python to convert the uh, JavaScript, for example, uh, convert the array to Python list. Um, and uh, so let's look at the JavaScript part. So this is similar uh, to assess PyFlash. Uh, the only difference is uh, you cannot uh, use the subscript to assess uh, a PyFlash element uh, on list or dictionary. Instead, you need to use the, the PyFlash object that get or say uh, uh, um, function, the, the method to assess. And but it, uh, uh, it supports a form of uh, on, uh, on Python list. Um, also, you can do some deep copy uh, to convert the uh, uh, Python uh, object uh, to a uh, uh, JavaScript object. Um, uh, there's a uh, two uh, tricky uh, tricky thing. Uh, in in Python, uh, you can uh, besides uh, this uh, two uh, J uh, PY, there's another function called two uh, Js, which means uh, for example in Python you can uh, call a JavaScript function and pass your Python object as the argument uh, in a JavaScript function in JavaScript uh, function the is called function. Uh, uh, you can uh, do this thing uh, to do the conversion inside the uh, JavaScript function, or you can earlier uh, call PyDy uh, to JS. So uh, after pass this result as an argument in the in the call uh, JavaScript function, the argument uh, will be a uh, for example will be a uh, JavaScript list uh, earlier, just uh, which means uh, transfer the conversion uh, in in Python earlier. And the final thing you need to pay attention is uh, you need to call Detroit on a PyFlash object because it may have some memory that you need to call this one. And uh, you can uh, transfer the responsibility of uh, Detroit in, in Python uh, earlier to this thing. And another thing is, is uh, if you use a print or console log, uh, which uh, will automatically uh, trigger two py or two test and a deep copy. Uh, this thing, this page is to introduce a uh, Py plus Y me uh, Detroit. And I asked this question uh, in GitHub uh, repo to the, uh, the author, there is a reply. And we, we can try to uh, see the example. In JavaScript, uh, we get uh, this uh, uh, Python script, this function, and then uh, we directly uh, call uh, this, uh, this uh, Py plus of a uh, uh, Python function. So uh, the step is uh, in this function, uh, running uh, the reference count because a uh, Python uh, can be collection uh, support uh, uh, reference count mechanism. So uh, for this uh, this uh, arbitrary, uh, 
uh, left count here equal a one, and after leaving this function, uh, left count uh, minus one. But in just queen, after calling this Python uh, function, the left the left count uh, still uh, will a one. So install is uh, after uh, this line, the left count of this uh, default uh, Python object uh, is one. So uh, to uh, in immediately release the, uh, the memory object, we need to call the uh, Detroit. The reason is uh, Python, uh, sorry, uh, charge query, uh, sometimes or usually uh, will not release the uh, deferred uh, object memory. So you need to uh, normally call this one uh, to release a uh, deferred Python uh, uh, object. So uh, this uh, design property of uh, Parsi in uh, Python, uh, this just is simple. Uh, here, uh, we in just query we can uh execute this Python query to get uh, uh some Python object. You become a pay flash in just query, and then uh we use some uh, get uh, another Python function and paste the pay flash as the argument here. So uh this argument uh is uh uh we compare this uh argument uh as the global variable. So uh. The result is uh this uh this uh is the same Python object, which means uh it's a round trip to uh achieve uh not break out uh, the the memory uh allocating. You just use the same memory address. So uh the the other example is uh uh versa uh, another solution. So uh this page is to introduce a JavaScript uh, the buffer and Python buffer uh, something you need to pay attention. Uh. Yeah, in in Python to assign a just query type of web is similar to uh this uh this one, similar to uh you assess a uh, Python buffer after from just query, but it's one more thing uh are different in just query, the uh, you can uh use a gate buffer, which means uh in some case uh if you use a uh, two days to do a uh, uh, copy, uh sometimes the, the the speed is slow. For example, uh, uh, for this one, for this case, the dimension uh, is about this and uh, speed. So, and in this case, uh, it's better to use gate buffer to uh, it will, which will allow, allow you to access a uh, uh, memory uh, allocated in uh, over something without a copy. It's very uh, faster. Uh, but uh, for this uh, case, uh, this dimension, it may be okay. Uh, uh, just use two days to do a copy. Yes, and to assess a buffer object, another way is uh, if you want to assess uh, uh, each element, you can use a uh, off or you just use uh, uh, this uh, pipash object that get uh, uh, pass, uh, this, uh, you need to pass uh, uh, the element index. Uh, I will introduce uh, my project, embedded uh, PyTacon viewer. And what's the DICON? Uh, this uh, stands for uh, digital imaging and communication in medicine. Uh, includes a uh, file content and format, a uh, network protocol, and sometimes you will see a PHCS in some uh, medical application. And you can store some information, uh, a series of patient, uh, patient study, and series of uh, that kind of file. For example, uh, X-ray scan series. Uh, include, uh, also, you, uh, you can store uh, patient name and information and uh, orientation and that kind of RT. Uh, if you want to handle uh, and render uh, that kind of uh, imagery, you need to handle the following text, transfer syntax, which uh, is referring uh, uncompressed, uh, or it may be a uh, JPEG uh, baseline and JPEG lossless. Uh, and the second uh, modality tag, it will indicate uh, is a CTNR or CR or ultrasound. Uh, photometric, uh, it could be a Molcom 1, Molcom 2, RGB, YPR, uh, pilot, and change forms, LU, or we can call LUT, LUA table. And uh, this are uh, very of interest. The nail down linear transform uh, case will be uh, window center, window uh, width. And there are some uh, other uh, transforms, modality transform and parallel transform. And also you need to pay attention to handle uh, be located and uh, be store and pixel representation. And if you the, your image is RGB, you need uh, another thing in uh, planner tag. Uh, if it is a value, your piece of array will be RGB, RGB. But if it is uh, one, your piece of array will uh, show R, uh, R color first, and then G color and B color. So we need to have a good parser library to handle this thing. The feature, uh, 
of this uh, contention surprised uh, view online or fly that comes and then uh, in terminal we will uh, supply a CUI command to invoke and we support adjustable window center mode and to view uh, multiple for multi-frame icon and uh, different uh, format icons on campus RGB uh, icon or JP icons and support different plane view and show information and support web and con extension. And this is a screenshot show information here and adjust a uh, window. Uh, use mouse move. Uh, uh, APS is up uh, 220 to 30 and uh, support uh, three plane views. Use a slider to, to see. Then if the video can see, let's play. Now we draw a file and see the uh, image changing. And then we draw a photo of uh, files. And to see is a uh, three plane views. Use slider to switch. This uh, implementation uh, detail. First, I use a uh, TypeScript React. Uh, TypeScript is, is a superset of uh, JavaScript, just adding uh, types. And I try to use a more type annotation, uh, Python. And uh, first, I in TypeScript, we load a uh, Python uh, our own uh, Python parser uh, Python file. And we get from here, we get a class uh, defined in Python script called uh, Python.com control function. And second, we load the uh, Python uh, file either local or online files. And in the third step, we do another things. First, uh, we uh, we uh, uh, instantiate uh, Python.com this uh, uh, object. And we uh, we in, uh, we pass uh, the a buffer and then uh, JPEG decoder uh, object as argument. Then we pass data and uh, pass the basic the uh, icon uh, information as a uh, is a uh, object member attribute. And also we use a uh, uh, numpy to do some calculation in the constructor function and store the result to the member attribute as RGB uh, one D one dimension uh, NDA array. And uh, step four. We in time screen we assess uh, this uh Python data object this uh bar is a uh, Python to assess uh, its uh, attributes to show that counts and uh, to draw on canvas and step five uh, in this way in this step we can use this uh, object to do some uh, some rendering uh this uh this page is talk about uh flow three uh here we instantiate uh, this uh, object. We pass uh, the JPEG decoder and buffer of uh, this file, and then use the control function. Uh, first, we use the uh, uh, to py to convert the data to the some uh, memory view. So every time getting memory view, uh, we pass the memory view to uh, uh, Python uh, library function call uh, to let it uh, pass the data. After that, uh, we will have uh, some uh, uh, bytes. Uh, Data, uh, the Dicon resource, and some Dicon uh, attribute uh, attack uh, information. And then step three. Uh, step three is uh, we will call some uh, render uh, frame to RGB one or one D uh, method. And in this uh, method, uh, in usually we will call the below method. This is try to uh, decompress uh, com complex data for complex Dicon. So uh, first uh, we will uh, use a Python query parse. Uh, this API uh, to uh, get a uh, uh, Py parse object earlier in Python scope. So, uh, so then we can destroy it in Python scope. Either we can do this, or we can ask the in JavaScript function to uh, call the Detroit in JavaScript function. Mm. Now, and then uh, in uh, we pass the, the this uh, data uh, as the argument of the injected uh, JavaScript uh, JPEG decoder this uh, function. This function is here. So here you can see uh, we use the uh, get buffer uh, this trick uh, to avoid uh, to avoid a uh, memory copy, and then we uh, pass the data uh, the data as the argument of this just query uh, uh, this decode function and get uh, the list data. The list data is uh, a red buffer, just create a red buffer, and we need to uh, remember to release this uh, the object uh, from get buffer, and uh, and the array buffer. Will return as this uh, uncompressed uh, JS proxy in Python. 
So uh, we need to use uh, two py to convert this uh, return value to memory view. So uh, after getting this uncompressed, we pass this to a uh, numpy uh, function call to get the numpy ND array. So it's a for, for 3.2. Use numpy and do some uh, uh, compare its performance. And in, in this uh, method, there are three uh, key points. First one uh, will, uh, is uh, you will run the that kind of visualization for cover this for. And in this for, uh, we will uh, um, uh, call the uh, uh, decompress uh, uh, function uh, mentioned in the previous uh, slide. And then we, we use the uh, uh, lengthy use an array to uh, some function to get minimum and maximum. And three, we, we, we need to invoke color for more than one case. And then uh, we need to uh, apply numpy clipping uh, function uh, if we adapt a uh, window center uh, with uh, more. And five is important. Uh, we need to do some uh, normalization to come up uh, acceptable uh, color range depth. And it could be either use uh, window center and with as a, a minimum maximum to map data or use uh, original minimum maximum from this step. And step is it convert uh, the data to uh, RGB one one dimension in array, uh, which will be used in the uh, JavaScript rendering uh, canvas. And in this uh, for uh, in this uh, step six, uh, there are uh, four uh, 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 case. Uh, they, they are from a different uh, that kind of format, but uh, the flow is similar. And uh, we, uh, we just uh, use uh, case three, uh, gray uh, image two dimension to RGB one uh, one dimension image array as an example. So in this one, in this uh, uh, method, uh, we will call uh, this uh, function to get a uh, alpha uh, array, uh, ND array, and then use a, a D stack this uh, uh, numpy uh, function, is very, which is very fast, and to stack as a uh, two dimension RGB one image. And then we use a uh, flatten. Uh, to get a uh, uh, one one dimension image array, and uh, this way is very fast. And in the past, uh, I learned one thing: is uh, the first thing is uh, if I use uh, some other uh, numpy uh, similar uh, function call, for example, uh, numpy uh, the, uh, insert approach to achieve the same result, it will be slower. So uh, to use a numpy uh, API, uh, there, there's always some uh, faster uh, numpy API. For your case, and the second thing I learned is, uh, you do not need to uh, iterate uh, data to convert your data uh, manually by your own, uh, because it will be slower. You uh, it better to use a numpy building function. So this is a speed uh, test. Uh, I use this file uh, from this side, and the result is uh, first I uh, use the numpy uh, and np dot stack in in PyDi, it will cost a uh, little point little two second, very fast. Uh, I use uh, the same ND array by I manually iterate each element to do a conversion as a one dimension RGB one, and the result is very slow in PyDi, four seconds. And then I try to uh, do the same thing iteration in local Python, it's faster, little point six five seconds. So uh, this data can give you a, a, a picture about the performance running in, in PyDi. Is for uh, for after instantiating, uh, we could use a Python object in TypeScript by is a uh, uh, Uh This line uh, after uh, just uh, instantiating uh, PyDi that kind of object uh, mentioned in previous page, and then we can directly access a member attribute. This uh, attribute is uh, just a string, so you will forward the, the, to get the request. Uh, the, the string attribute to uh, just create scope. You will get uh, this string attribute data. And here we show is a Python object call and call is a member function, krgb one one dimension ND array to get a, a, a land array. And here is a, actually is a, a py a proxy buffer. So we could use the same uh, skill mentioned in uh, some previous page, uh, page uh, use the git buffer and then uh, and we need to uh, remember to release this uh, uh, buffer. And then we draw uh, this uh, uncompressed data on canvas. And profile, uh, which means uh, we could use an uh, object and to do the rendering. And here we could uh, we call this uh, render frame to attribute one, uh, the similar function call. 
and the case two you uh, just show uh, if we want to uh, use the Python keyword argument in the future, you just uh, use this uh, Python API that call kwhrgs. Uh, it will convert the uh, uh, just create object in pass uh, and convert it to the Python keyword argument. And these are some uh, notes and tips uh, I, I found out. In uh, just create uh, some copy function, I try to uh, do this test. Uh, in this test, uh, I already passed the uh, pi parsing buffer as the argument of this uh, third party uh, just create the curl function. But uh, it was. Why it was? Because uh, for this uh, function call, third party function call uh, API, uh, if the argument is only one, uh, so it will uh, internally it will automatically uh, use a for of to iterate uh, each each uh, byte to do some copy. But the result is, is very slow. And uh, later I use a uh, get buffer. Uh, it will be faster. That's because uh, get buffer will uh, uh, use the same uh, memory address in the uh, open summing uh, uh, memory. And uh, we can uh, pass the data to as the argument, first argument. Uh, and then uh, we pass the other uh, information. And uh, the, this function call, if uh, it's a function call, the number of uh, argument is more than one. Uh, you will just, just uh, use the, the memory, will not do the copy inside. So which means uh, if you want to assess a, a buffer, a, a, a buffer after you need to keep uh, these uh, tips and know. And another note you need to uh, remember is a uh, 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 may affect your web UI uh, updating. It could be a long running HTTP calculation or you, could, you call uh, the Python script too often. Yes, and the, my suggestion is uh, if you worry about this thing or if this is your concern, uh, you could consider to move the Python script on a web worker. Summary, uh, I, I found all these tips or not this thing in the uh, Python documentation. First one, uh, you can use Python uh, as an uh, IP or just like Jupyter Notebook. And uh, the second one is uh, you can just pull a group of functions, usually a status. But of course, you can pull a, a global uh, internal state uh, object. Okay, but it is not easily maintained uh, for a, a bigger screen. So uh, the way I found out is uh, we can define a main class and instantly you just create and use them and keeping uh, some internal state as the uh, uh, member attribute, uh, just a normal uh, Python program. I think it's, uh, it's more convenient. In the conclusion, uh, Python might be useful and please uh, evaluate if it fits your requirement. And I think Python, uh, this approach uh, is a good uh, software community. Uh, I've submitted some uh, um, uh, pull requests and involved in uh, some uh, GitHub issue and GitHub uh, discussion. And so uh, there are still uh, something uh, we can improve. Uh, so I uh, think they are welcome to uh, submit some uh, pull requests. And you can uh, do enhancement about CR debugger and better module system and uh, improve loading time, or even uh, pull OpenCV as a Python package uh, or improve uh, documentation. And about my project, in very uh, this uh, Python can review. Uh, I have uh, published this uh, new version of this computation, uh, which use uh, Python, and the uh, size is about uh, 30 megabyte. And also the thing is uh, to enhance the uh, user experience, uh, not working uh, Python loading. So I use another library I publish in uh, NPM package, which will allow uh, loading uh, Python and checking uh, files UI is actually running at the same time. Uh, so the first two things uh, will run concurrently. Uh, and uh, using Python uh, will automatically away uh, the finishing of uh, loading Python. It's in, you will automate in queue away function. And that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. And this is my content info. Uh, this is my gear account. This is my LinkedIn account. And let's start QA time. Yes. It's super cool. I will write the name here. Python. Uh, uh, Yeah, so so Pyodide was the um, the WebAssembly Python tool that you used to build this. Um, yes. Was there any features that you feel like were missing when you when you first tried that out that you would really like to see? 
Okay. Um, because uh, PyDai is still in a uh, developer stage, and uh, I uh, I think the most uh, difficult thing is I need to figure out, figure out how to reuse or how to stay store some state in uh, embedded PyDai, a Python uh, uh, the, the environment. And uh, uh, this uh, this thing is not documented uh, is not documented in in the uh, uh, official documentation. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, uh, the current stage is uh, the the normal way is uh, to use a PyDai as a IEP or uh, the, the, the runtime, just like some uh, Jupyter notebook. Uh, the, the, uh, you just uh, uh, say uh, you, you just type some Python uh, uh, input and get some uh, Python uh, output. But uh, you need to figure out how to uh, use the uh, Python object. So uh, finally, I, I, I figure out uh, I need I can use uh, I can I can uh, define some Python class and I can uh, internet uh, uh, internet uh, the, the Python object uh, as a Python class ab- uh, object and use this uh, use this object in JavaScript. Yeah, and also uh, in the recent weeks, I I involved the PyDai community and I I submit some ideas and uh, they are happy to uh, to see uh, the people join and I think they are uh, try to uh, improve PyDai as some. A more powerful uh, framework, uh, for example, to improve uh, how to how to use PyDai as a uh, as a multiple Python uh, bigger project. I think this is one of the target. Uh, it's one of the ta- targets uh, they are trying to uh, achieve. Yeah, is to use it out, outside of a REPL context, but like you did, actually distributing it as an application. Yes. 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 Yeah. Cool. Did you find it difficult to? Um, kind of discover patterns in like where you should store state. Either it should be stored in JavaScript or stored in Python. Uh, you mean uh, my 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 preference or uh, I? Because uh, I saw there's lots of options, right? You can you can yes, store yes. state in JavaScript. You can pass yes, it back yeah. to Python. You can store it in Python. Pass it back to JavaScript. So did you find like one was easier for you? Uh, I think it depends on your needs and or your requirement. And for my my current this uh, set project, uh, it's better to use some Python object. So uh, I can avoid that. Uh, I can avoid. I can I cannot avoid storing uh, Python object uh, in Python uh, over uh, this, this space. So. Uh, yeah, I think it depend, depends on your, your, your needs. Yeah, because I saw you, you also have to, there's the caveat, like um, you have to destroy the, the JavaScript object that's holding the Python data because yes. otherwise the browser won't release the memory and you can, everything can slow down because you have this memory leak going on. Yes, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a, a kind of uh, uh, a little extra test you need to you need to uh, pay attention and it's some kind of uh, 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 some kind of the other like the other uh, programming language that she proposed you need to uh, manually deallocate this uh, uh, allocated uh, Python object uh, but I think uh, it's more, it may be okay for some people yeah yeah it's kind of unusual we're using memory managed languages and then yes, we yes. still have to think about like Oh, this this object will never be deallocated by the the garbage collector. Yes, yes, yes. So I I was um, amazed that you had gone so far in this project. It seemed like you had built something like this before. Like you were you're very familiar with the DICOM format. Is that true? Had you had you done a lot of work um, with DICOM? Uh, in not, not really, because. Uh, I made the, the previous version of this uh, the Rue Daikon uh, Chrome extension two years ago, but at, but at that time I used one uh, JavaScript library which can uh, can do some Daikon format and and and, and give uh, me some uh, output uh, the, the RGB uh, data, but uh, but uh, when using that library, uh, I do I do not need to know the some detail about the Daikon format because. 
uh, Red Library uh, already uh, read the, the, the listing and uh, give a, a give a some high label some uh, high label API. But uh, when I switch to uh, Py Python, the Python uh, library, uh, I think it's very powerful. Pow pow but uh, uh, usually you need to uh, uh, care about uh, you need to handle the detail uh, by yourself. You, you, because usually the uh, Red Library Python uh, supply some uh, low label API for you, so uh, it's powerful. So you can manually uh, read and uh, get every information you need for this Daikang uh, file. But the drawback is uh, you need to understand more about the Daikang format. So, so within this, uh, within this uh, half year, I, I study and also I learned the Daikang uh, format more. And I also I this, I, I, for, the, for achieving this, I also I, I also uh, ask some question on the state workflow to know to ask people to about this that come for me. Yeah. Yeah. Were were any of those particular formats like the most difficult? I think the most difficult is uh, the uh, because of some JPEG. You know, usually uh, the JPEG usually is uh, the best known is uh, the JPEG uh, baseline. But uh, there are some, uh, uh, there are some, uh, uh, there are some, uh, the other JPEG for me. So for, for example, JPEG, uh, I remember, uh, 70 or JPEG, uh, uh, JPEG, uh, uh JPEG 19, uh, I forget the, the, the detail for me. But, so for those, uh, uh, for those, uh, uh JPEG, uh, uh, for me, they cannot be decoded by the browser, uh, uh building. Uh, decoder. So mm. uh, the way I found out is I need to uh, find out some uh, JavaScript uh, JPEG decoder library, and I I paste this uh, JPEG decoder library uh, uh, into a Python uh, uh, Python environment. So in the in the Python code, I use the the JPEG uh, JavaScript uh, decoder function inside a Python script, and and uh, because uh, I, why I, why I need, why I uh, uh, adapt this way is, uh, is for better uh, the, the, the workflow for this, uh, this call. So it's uh, the, the, the approach I, I adapt. So yes, I think it's the most difficult thing I found out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming to this Q&A today. Everyone check thank out you. Grimmer's talk if you've not seen it before. And check out the embedded PyDICOM React viewer for viewing Py, uh, for viewing DICOM files in your browser. It's really cool. And thank you all today. Thank you.